Our story begins with our main protagonist Shiki, his grandpa, and Michael looking at the stars. Shiki gets lied to by his grandpa that shooting stars are dragons. <laughs> Michael disagrees. Grandpappy tells him that he doesn't know what they are if he doesn't reach them, and see what they really are. Shiki asks his grandpa what is on the other side of the sky. His grandpa replies that across the sky is the universe. And the universe is everything, cats, dogs, humans, even bugs. Shiki is very scared of bugs. <laughs> Grandpappy continues by telling Shiki that somewhere in the universe is the one named Mommy. Shiki asks what is she, and Grandpappy replies that she's a being that can make every wish come true. In the next scene we can see a ship sailing towards the island. I'm fast as fuck, boy! <laughs> Lucy Hartfilia and Happy disembark their ship, I mean Rebecca and Happy. Rebecca is a stinky Twitch streamer and she thinks this adventure is her chance to go viral. They get scared by trumpets welcoming them into the city, as the two of them are the first visitors in over 100 years. Scrappy over here asks Rebecca what's her dream. Rebecca, the viewer's whore says that her dream is reaching 1 million subscribers. Rebecca asks the weird rusty five nights at Freddy's looking ass robot if any events are going on. Happy adds that she means events that look good on camera. The rust master suggests monster fighting. Rebecca and Happy encounter a giant robotic pussy. Milker says it's cute, but the cat ends up falling. revealing a long-haired man on its back. He quickly mounts Rebecca feeling curious about what she is, and starts squeezing her big monster cannons. <laughs> Rebecca tells Shiki that she's a human but Shiki doesn't believe her. As Shiki laid down looking up under Rebecca's skirt, a bug frightens him and Rebecca kicks him into the stratosphere. <laughs> Shiki comes back trying to eat happy. All of a sudden his gears start spinning and approaches Rebecca with an aggressive demeanor. Rebecca fears that he'll hit her, Shiki just extends his hand, asking them to be their friend, Rebecca punches the shit out, but he appears back into a tree even more insistent. Rebecca and Happy run to town to file for sexual abuse. The bar lady tells them that they probably met Shiki and Rebecca asks if they know him, Shiki pops up from underneath the counter and says that they all know each other, asking them to be his friends too. Rebecca tells him she'll think about it, the answer almost makes Shiki log out. All of them end up partying in Rebecca's and Happy's honor for being the first visitors in 100 years. A Robin Hood looking spy can be seen observing them and running to his oil daddy. Tells him that the time has come and the king responds that they have no choice. Back in the bar, Shiki Rebecca and Happy talk about their dreams and Siki says that his dream is to go out in the world. Rebecca finds it fascinating that he's never been but Shiki replies that if he leaves no one could repair his friends. Shiki feels a little bit sleepy and straight up busts through the table with his head. Rebecca asks if it's okay giving him a haircut. And Michael asks if she's wondering what a human child is doing on this island. Explaining that one day the Demon King aka his grandpappy showed up with him. Unfortunately the Demon King couldn't be repaired. Happy tries going to sleep as Rebecca bitches about editing her videos to upload them to YouTube. The robots downstairs look menacing in the direction of their rooms. Shiki wakes up, freaks up about his hair and goes running to use Rebecca's anti-stress milkers. Shiki eventually finds in full shibari. Rebecca freaks the fuck out asking Shiki to untie her. In that moment the king shows up with his rusty soldiers and tells Shiki that they have been waiting for someone with a ship to show up. Rebecca says that they might be infected with a virus and the king agrees, a virus that gives them free will. Shiki desperately tries convincing them to let him fix them. The king wants none of his bullshit and says that it's been easier to let him live until now. Everyone in town jumps Shiki's ass. Shiki looks at Michael saying they can still be friends. No! Shiki, inspired by Rebecca's words of friendship forces all of them off of him and calls them weak trash. Shiki says that he will fight for friendship with all his might and gets very mad a glow engulfing his body. The king attacks but Shiki parries his attack with his own punch. Shiki starts floating all over the place as the king shoots at him. Happy explains to our views for brains Rebecca that he's got the ether gear, an ancient lost magic. Shiki punches the king into the ground making the ground collapse grabbing Rebecca and Happy as they fall. I am announcing my imminent cream ejection. Shiki asks Rebecca where is their ship at. After Rebecca tells him, they start falling that direction. Shiki tells Rebecca and Happy to go but Rebecca won't let him stay. They start flying away. Shiki asks if they are going to another land, Rebecca replies that they will go to another planet. 
Shiki is shocked as he finally sees his first dragon. The king smashed into the ground reaches for the sky and says go my boy reach for the stars. The rest of the robots all say that they needed to put on this performance as Shiki would stay forever there and repair them. A flashback of the demon king asks the robots to help Shiki and he will change the universe. Everyone deactivates, Michael the last one to go says that if he knew how sad and empty having a heart feels he wouldn't have wanted one in the first place. As Shiki looks outside the ship, Rebecca says that this place in the universe is Sakura's cosmos. Out of nowhere Happy draws Rebecca's attention pointing at Shiki. Shiki cries saying he forgives his toaster friends and decides that from now on his goal is to make 100 friends. In the next scene Shiki watches Rebecca and Happy videos on Twitch, making fun of them meowing. Shiki tries checking if it's bubblegum pink, unfortunately there's an anti-pervert system in place. Shiki doesn't know what he'll do and how to make 100 friends. Rebecca tells him he could be hers and Happy's bodyguard as his gravity powers would be very useful. Shiki accepts her request. Our team arrives at the planet of adventurers. They unboard the ship in front of the adventurers guild, Shiki is very surprised seeing so many people and wants to touch them but Rebecca stops him remembering how good he touched her. Shiki laying on the ground notices a big ass hologram of some kind of sexy female entity and starts pleading to grant his wish of making friends, starting to cry again remembering his lost recycled friends. Rebecca tells him that it's not the real mother and they don't know much about her. Shiki thinks she looks very familiar, and a bunch of ugly disgusting, unwashed, Power Rangers looking, smelly, musty dudes laugh at him saying that she's outside the Sakura cosmos. No one knows where she's located. Shiki puts his foot down shaking the whole place ups, everyone quiets down. Shiki proceeds to ask them to be his friends making them laugh even harder at him. Rebecca takes him outside telling him not everyone is worth being his friend. As she says that some dude captures Happy in a jar, throws a smoke bomb and runs with him riding a flying bike. Shiki gets mad and starts running after him. Rebecca has a flashback when she found Happy, both of them being single in this world become friends. Back to Shiki, we can see him running on every surface possible before flying up and crashing the thief's bike down. The thief shoots a warning shot into the air. Shiki tells him that it's over, just then the thief's gang shows up and Rebecca catches up to them too. <laughs> Shiki takes a step forward, activates his abilities and starts falling forward taking 15 people down at once. The screw head starts shooting his cannon and the thief drops Happy. Happy ends up running into Rebecca's arms and starts transforming into a pair of guns. Everyone freaks out thinking he could turn into a vibrator too. Rebecca blasts the shit out of everyone. Shiki saves her from the heavy weapons guy and she takes him out from above. This peep squeak stood no chance. As they walk away from the scuffle, Shiki asks why Happy is a machine and Happy tells him he almost died and got his body changed into an android. Shiki smiles making Rebecca and Happy uneasy. A new Twitch streamer with a big ass, named Clarice, appears and they start walking with them to get Shiki's Adventure Ray card sorted out. The most popular Twitch streamer shows up throwing shade at Rebecca and her trash videos. Rebecca starts crying making Shiki mad, he grabs this blue bitch and turns her world upside down. The blue bitch seems to enjoy Shiki thinking he's gonna be good content for her on the van's account. Shiki, Happy and Rebecca go eating and we can see Natsu and Lucy in the background. Rebecca shows Shiki his new adventurer card, naming him Shiki Granbell after the planet he is from. Dot. In the next scene Erza and her gang walk into the adventurer's guild asking Clarissa if she saw Shiki, this ugly indoor glasses wearing stupid man snitches and tells Erza that they are going to Norma. Shiki tries to fly the ship, but as a ship virgin gets shy pressing all the buttons. The ship losses control and they start going down, Shiki tries taking control but hits a stone pillar and plummet to the ground. Rebecca and Happy worry that their ship got stuck in the ground but Shiki uses his ether gear to lift it and plop it back down. On the surface of planet Norma rains ether crystals, this fucking stones. Shiki doesn't even know what ether is, Shiki got special needs. Happy explained that the ether is magic, duh. Rebecca continues that Ether Gears is different than magic, Ether Gears forces the power through the body to rearrange itself, like a machine. Harsh weather makes Norma unhabitable on the surface, so everyone lives underground. Shiki, Rebecca and Happy went to see the professor. Rebecca is worried about the professor and Shiki looks at her female form with x-ray glasses. A dude pulls a gun on them, revealing that it is the younger form of professor. Nice. A new sexy girl shows up and introduces herself as the narrator telling us that the story we follow, jumps ahead 20,000 years. This is basically time travel shit right now. As this dude threatens our team with a gun, someone attacks from above. 
Shiki using the X-ray goggles and his powers punches through the sailing. Shiki laughs at the attacker not being able to take him serious seeing him in the nude. As our team eat, the news reveal that the new Adventures Guild is doing very good for the start. The news makes Rebecca realize that they are not at the right time. She gets out seeing all the vintage technology making Shiki drop his burger. That man is young Professor Wise. Rebecca tries taking advantage of the situation going live, to basically become the new Po Dai Pi, but Ice Cube shows up driving a big ass mech, asking them where is Wise? Ice Cube gets into an argument with one of his associates and our team runs away. As soon as they realize they started shooting at them but Shiki manages to dodge. The mech caught up to them, but- But Shiki's sheer strength fucks him in one punch. Ice Cube gets out of the mech thinking they will come back crawling. Again at the bar, Shiki creams his pants looking at a rabbit waitress. While eating, Wise just fucking shows up and sits right next to them. Rebecca freaks out asking Wise to hear them out. To summarize, Wise saves Kat and Rebecca and they came 50 years from the future. Rebecca shows him proof, shocking Wise, as he is bald in the future. Shiki asks why he stole money from Ice Cube, Wise responds that it's none of his business. As he looks away Shiki changes class and steals his suitcase. Sitting on the ceiling all of a sudden he falls, the suitcase opens up revealing ENP, an anti-mech android. She can disable androids, robots and even ether gear. Shiki asks her to be friends and ENP agrees. Wise is jealous and grabs ENP by the head, thinking how much would she cost. ENP explains that she only woke up because of hearing her master's voice. ENP starts crying and runs away saying that master's ice cube orders are absolute. Wise gets excited that she might be worth a lot of money following her. The blue rabbit tells them that Wise is a bandit but she knows nothing else. Shiki asks Rebecca what they should do and replies that they should seek a way to return to their original timeline. Rebecca looks down and sees that Shiki held onto the briefcase, and found a Twitch cube in it. A video of Ice Cube appears, talking dirty to ENP and ordering her to dance. She doesn't want to dance, loosing a leg in the process. Ice Cube tells her that he is her master now, and forces her to delete the memory of her former master. Shiki sees Red, saying that he will help her find her master and repair her. ENP's repair record shows up, revealing that her last maintenance was done in our team's normal timeline. Shiki the passenger princess, Rebecca and Happy ride a motorcycle trying to find Pino aka EDP. As Ice Cube thinks of punishing Pino for running away, we can see Wise hiding in the corner. Ice Cube starts ripping Pino's leg off but, just before doing that, Wise hits his ugly mug with a rock and catches Pino, saying that since he stole her she is technically his. Just then our team enters the scene. Shiki jumps off the motorcycle and smashes some faces in. Wise steals the motorcycle and runs away. Ice Cube smirks activating a trap. Shiki pushes Rebecca away out of harm's way and Ice Cube pursues Wise in his mech. Fuck I hate mech suits. Shiki, not dead since he is a total chat actually ended up into a junk hole. As he looks around he sees a robot resembling Michael but turns out it's not him. Rebecca fights ugly and uglier, but distracts them with her sexy seductive tempting and attractive body. Shiki busts out of the hole and in a true ballerina style, hits them with a double barrel swan kick. Shiki starts flying trying to find Pino and Happy while Rebecca is left with the horny criminals. As Ice Cube is about to murk Happy, Pino, and Wise, Shiki blows up his mech with a kick again. Ice Cube activates some kind of ability telling Shiki that he will die for the sake of some scrap metal, but Shiki being the resilient little fucker says, that they are beings just like them, blasting the living fuck out of Ice Cube, as Ice Cube falls to his doom, the mech suddenly activates and grabs Shiki revealing that Ice's owl is controlling it, being ready to self-destroy to take Shiki out. Pino takes a step forward and deactivates the mech. Wise points a gun to Ice, well, trying to ice him but Pino's power deactivates that too, only option remaining to smash him in the head with a piece of metal. Pino says sorry Mr. Cat for deactivating him as well and goes to Shiki, asking him why he cares about a machine. Shiki being Shiki says that she is not only a machine but also his friend. Erza and her nasty ass ship starts approaching Norma. Rebecca discovered that Wise will be the one making Pino. And Wise asks for lottery numbers. The cops pull up and our team dips. Wise thinks he is sane but he forgot he is also a criminal. Our team got back to the ship at the surface, they need to get back to Blue Garden, hoping that someone at the guild will be able to get them back. Wise shows up taking them hostage till they give him the ship. Shiki accepts since they need a better ship to find mother. Wise steers the ship and upgrades it with his ether gear, Rebecca is shocked since he never mentioned him. His ether gear is moting the ship in real time. Wise pushes on the throttle and escape the popo, Wise even repaired Pino. 
Shiki asks him to name his Ether Gear 2, naming it Heavy Drop Boy. As they escape Norma the old version of Wise calls Rebecca telling a monster ate Norma's time. This monster, Wise tells them that a lot of Normans left and Wise is accompanied by Bunny Girl, Lucky. Pino recognizes his voice and Wise tells her he just fixed her up a little bit, her previous master being someone called Master Demon King, Shiki's grandpa. Wise sees his younger self, assuring them that a planet consumed by the Chrono Monsters will not affect reality, so no paradox is happening. Our team finally gets in contact with Erza and her pirate ship, they get trapped by her. They get dragged in and Rebecca says she is one of the seven pirates of the cosmos. They crash in Erza's ship and get a call from her. Erza introduces herself and wise simps for her. Shiki asks her what she is after, Erza replies that she is after selling people like them, explaining that all of them belong to her now. She will sell them once they arrive on a piece of shit planet. Shiki being in his thief class right now decides to tell Erza that they will steal her ship instead, since they need a new one. Erza accepts the challenge and give him directions. Wise straps up. Rebecca is impressed with him but he ends up saying that he will win over Erza. Shiki encounters zombies? I guess zombies. They attack but Shiki easily dodges everything and makes short work of them while freaking out how awesome space is. Happy, Pino and Rebecca are trapped in slime tentacles. It's hot. Wise tries taking a peek at Rebecca since he is a creep but get captured too. Happy transforms into guns, Rebecca starts fucking shit up releasing Pino and defeating the zombies, but doesn't release Wise. She tries taking a peek too. Shiki gets to Erza's smash chambers. She turns back wearing a weird choke mask and starts throwing her wet tentacles at Shiki. Shiki getting smashed the fuck up remembers his grandpappy beating his ass too, and asks him how he is so strong? Michael saying that he is the demon king after all. Shiki attacks grandpappy again only to get caught in his gravity power. Shiki tells him that's not fair and Grandpapi decides teaching him too. Shiki, inspired by his Grandpapi almost lays a punch on Erza, asks her what in the living fuck is she and Erza replies that she is to one to surpass the Demon King. Erza asks what Shiki's objective is. Shiki tells her that his objective is finding mother and he will never give up. In a flashback Grandpapi is dying, motivating Shiki even more to beat that ass. Other ships lurk around, they are the justice ships waiting to capture her. Erza tells Shiki that even the demon King Ziggy gave up on finding mother. Shiki says that he different for real, grows horns and hits Erza with all his juiced up power. King. I'm gonna keep fighting for grandpa's dream! And see it through to the end! That's a mech attack! Gravity! Comet! The team shows up and Erza starts melting, freaking them up. The real Erza shows up on screen, telling them that was just a parasite, they are on the storage ship and thanks them for cleaning it up. Erza offers them the ship, why the fuck did this bitch pull this hole as charade only to see Shiki's power. Erza tells Shiki that this ship belonged to Ziggy the Demon King, he used it on a quest to find mother, but he returned to Grand Bell knowing that he is about to die, and decided to raise Shiki, god knows where he found this freak. Erza says that she owes Ziggy her life. Shiki feels bad taking the ship, but Erza reveals her fleet of ships. This simp says that the Justice Force, or whatever their name is, cornered them. Erza tells our team to get the fuck out of there. Shiki thanks her, telling her that if she's Grandpapi's friend, she's his as well. Erza tells Shiki that Grandpapi told her just one thing about mother, that the one that finds her, will be reborn. Wise pulls the warp lever. Be one of these levers. <laughs> mind boggling Shiki and himself. What just happened? Did we teleport or something? So dramatic. Oh, maybe they didn't have fast travel 50 years ago. In other words, we warped! The future is awesome! Space is awesome! Somewhere in the ship a big a capsule opens up, revealing a big titty goth girlfriend. Shiki tells Rebecca that their new ship will get them to mother. Wise intervenes saying that's his ship too, Shiki responding that he's not a friend. They start cleaning the ship and Happy suggests that Rebecca should do a bathtub twitch stream. Rebecca and Happy chill in the bath discovering that this bath activates the ether inside of her body. She shots a beam through the roof getting sucked out, but the ship repairs itself. Our team change outfits, Shiki looks cool as fuck, not gonna lie. Rebecca asks Shiki and Wise how they learned Ether, saying that she might be able to use it too. Our team find the Demon King's room and Shiki takes a seat in his throne. Shiki's ether gear activates the ship and the big milker's goth sexy appears calling Shiki the new demon king. Shiki tells her to bark as a test, she does. As Shiki looks outside the ship, 
Rebecca says that this place in the universe is Sakura's cosmos. Out of nowhere Happy draws Rebecca's attention pointing at Shiki. Shiki cries saying he forgives his toaster friends and decides that from now on his goal is to make 100 friends. In the next scene Shiki watches Rebecca and Happy videos on Twitch, making fun of them meowing. Shiki tries checking if it's bubblegum pink, unfortunately there's an anti-pervert system in place. Shiki doesn't know what he'll do and how to make 100 friends. Rebecca tells him he could be hers and Happy's bodyguard as his gravity powers would be very useful. Shiki accepts her request. Our team arrives at the planet of adventurers. They unboard the ship in front of the adventurers guild, Shiki is very surprised seeing so many people and wants to touch them but Rebecca stops him remembering how good he touched her. Shiki laying on the ground notices a big ass hologram of some kind of sexy female entity and starts pleading to grant his wish of making friends, starting to cry again remembering his lost recycled friends. Rebecca tells him that it's not the real mother and they don't know much about her. Shiki thinks she looks very familiar, and a bunch of ugly disgusting, unwashed, power rangers looking, smelly, musty dudes laugh at him saying that she's outside the Sakura cosmos. No one knows where she's located. Shiki puts his foot down shaking the whole place ups, everyone quiets down. Shiki proceeds to ask them to be his friends making them laugh even harder at him. Rebecca takes him outside telling him not everyone is worth being his friend. As she says that some dude captures Happy in a jar, throws a smoke bomb and runs with him riding a flying bike. Shiki gets mad and starts running after him. Rebecca has a flashback when she found Happy, both of them being single in this world become friends. Back to Shiki, we can see him running on every surface possible before flying up and crashing the thief's bike down. The thief shoots a warning shot into the air. Shiki tells him that it's over, just then the thief's gang shows up and Rebecca catches up to them too. Ah, no! Shiki takes a step forward, activates his abilities and starts falling forward taking 15 people down at once. The screw head starts shooting his cannon and the thief drops Happy. Happy ends up running into Rebecca's arms and starts transforming into a pair of guns. Everyone freaks out thinking he could turn into a vibrator too. Rebecca blasts the shit out of everyone. Shiki saves her from the heavy weapons guy and she takes him out from above. This peep squeak stood no chance. As they walk away from the scuffle, Shiki asks why Happy is a machine and Happy tells him he almost died and got his body changed into a android. Shiki smiles making Rebecca and Happy uneasy. A new Twitch streamer with a big ass, named Clarice, appears and they start walking with them to get Shiki's adventure ray card sorted out. The most popular Twitch streamer shows up throwing shade at Rebecca and her trash videos. Rebecca starts crying making Shiki mad, he grabs this blue bitch and turns her world upside down. The blue bitch seems to enjoy Shiki thinking he's gonna be good content for her on the van's account. Shiki, Happy and Rebecca go eating and we can see Natsu and Lucy in the background. Rebecca shows Shiki his new adventurer card, naming him Shiki Granbell after the planet he is from. Dot. In the next scene Erza and her gang walk into the adventurer's guild asking Clarissa if she saw Shiki, this ugly indoor glasses wearing stupid man snitches and tells Erza that they are going to Norma. Shiki tries to fly the ship, but as a ship virgin gets shy pressing all the buttons. The ship losses control and they start going down, Shiki tries taking control but hits a stone pillar and plummet to the ground. Rebecca and Happy worry that their ship got stuck in the ground but Shiki uses his ether gear to lift it and plop it back down. On the surface of planet Norma rains ether crystals, this fucking stones. Shiki doesn't even know what ether is, Shiki got special needs. Happy explained that the ether is magic, duh. Rebecca continues that Ether Gears is different than magic, Ether Gears forces the power through the body to rearrange itself, like a machine. Harsh weather makes Norma unhabitable on the surface, so everyone lives underground. Shiki, Rebecca and Happy went to see the professor. Rebecca is worried about the professor and Shiki looks at her female form with x-ray glasses. A dude pulls a gun on them, revealing that it is the younger form of professor. Nice. A new sexy girl shows up and introduces herself as the narrator telling us that the story we follow, jumps ahead 20,000 years. This is basically time travel shit right now. As this dude threatens our team with a gun, someone attacks from above. Shiki using the x-ray goggles and his powers punches through the sailing. Shiki laughs at the attacker not being able to take him serious seeing him in the nude. As our team eat, the news reveal that the new adventures guild is doing very good for the start. The news makes Rebecca realize that they are not at the right time. She gets out seeing all the vintage technology making Shiki drop his burger. That man is young Professor Wise. Rebecca tries taking advantage of the situation going live, to basically become the new Po Dai Pi, but Ice Cube shows up driving a big ass mech, asking them where is Wise? 
Ice Cube gets into an argument with one of his associates and our team runs away. As soon as they realize they started shooting at them but Shiki manages to dodge. The mech caught up to them, but- But Shiki's sheer strength fucks him in one punch. Ice Cube gets out of the mech thinking they will come back crawling. Again at the bar, Shiki creams his pants looking at a rabbit waitress. While eating, Wise just fucking shows up and sits right next to them. Rebecca freaks out asking Wise to hear them out. To summarize, Wise saves Kat and Rebecca and they came 50 years from the future. Rebecca shows him proof, shocking Wise, as he is bald in the future. Shiki asks why he stole money from Ice Cube, Wise responds that it's none of his business. As he looks away Shiki changes class and steals his suitcase. Sitting on the ceiling all of a sudden he falls, the suitcase opens up revealing ENP, an anti-mech android. She can disable androids, robots and even ether gear. Shiki asks her to be friends and ENP agrees. Wise is jealous and grabs ENP by the head, thinking how much would she cost. ENP explains that she only woke up because of hearing her master's voice. ENP starts crying and runs away saying that master's ice cube orders are absolute. Wise gets excited that she might be worth a lot of money following her. The blue rabbit tells them that Wise is a bandit but she knows nothing else. Shiki asks Rebecca what they should do and replies that they should seek a way to return to their original timeline. Rebecca looks down and sees that Shiki held onto the briefcase, and found a Twitch cube in it. A video of Ice Cube appears, talking dirty to ENP and ordering her to dance. She doesn't want to dance, loosing a leg in the process. Ice Cube tells her that he is her master now, and forces her to delete the memory of her former master. Shiki sees Red, saying that he will help her find her master and repair her. ENP's repair record shows up, revealing that her last maintenance was done in our team's normal timeline. Shiki the passenger princess, Rebecca and Happy ride a motorcycle trying to find Pino aka EDP. As Ice Cube thinks of punishing Pino for running away, we can see Wise hiding in the corner. Ice Cube starts ripping Pino's leg off but, just before doing that, Wise hits his ugly mug with a rock and catches Pino, saying that since he stole her she is technically his. Just then our team enters the scene. Shiki jumps off the motorcycle and smashes some faces in. Wise steals the motorcycle and runs away. Ice Cube smirks activating a trap. Shiki pushes Rebecca away out of harm's way and Ice Cube pursues Wise in his mech. Fuck I hate mech suits. Shiki, not dead since he is a total chat actually ended up into a junk hole. As he looks around he sees a robot resembling Michael but turns out it's not him. Rebecca fights ugly and uglier, but distracts them with her sexy seductive tempting and attractive body. Shiki busts out of the hole and in a true ballerina style, hits them with a double barrel swan kick. Shiki starts flying trying to find Pino and Happy while Rebecca is left with the horny criminals. As Ice Cube is about to murk Happy, Pino, and Wise, Shiki blows up his mech with a kick again. Ice Cube activates some kind of ability telling Shiki that he will die for the sake of some scrap metal, but Shiki being the resilient little fucker says, that they are beings just like them, blasting the living fuck out of Ice Cube, as <laughs> Ice Cube falls to his doom. The mech suddenly activates and grabs Shiki revealing that Ice's owl is controlling it, being ready to self-destroy to take Shiki out. Pino takes a step forward and deactivates the mech. Wise points a gun to Ice, well, trying to ice him but Pino's power deactivates that too, only option remaining to smash him in the head with a piece of metal. Pino says sorry Mr. Cat for deactivating him as well and goes to Shiki, asking him why he cares about a machine. Shiki being Shiki says that she is not only a machine but also his friend. Erza and her nasty ass ship starts approaching Norma. Rebecca discovered that Wise will be the one making Pino. And Wise asks for lottery numbers. The cops pull up and our team dips. Wise thinks he is sane but he forgot he is also a criminal. Our team got back to the ship at the surface, they need to get back to Blue Garden, hoping that someone at the guild will be able to get them back. Wise shows up taking them hostage till they give him the ship. Shiki accepts since they need a better ship to find Mother. Wise steers the ship and upgrades it with his ether gear. Rebecca is shocked since he never mentioned him. His ether gear is moting the ship in real time. Wise pushes on the throttle and escape the popo, Wise even repaired Pino. Shiki asks him to name his ether gear too, naming it Heavy Drop Boy. As they escape Norma the old version of Wise calls Rebecca telling a monster ate Norma's time. This monster, Wise tells them that a lot of Normans left and Wise is accompanied by Bunny Girl, Lucky. Pino recognizes his voice and Wise tells her he just fixed her up a little bit, her previous master being someone called Master Demon King, Shiki's grandpa. Wise sees his younger self, assuring them that a planet consumed by the Chrono Monsters will not affect reality, so no paradox is happening. 
Our team finally gets in contact with Erza and her pirate ship, they get trapped by her. They get dragged in and Rebecca says she is one of the seven pirates of the cosmos. They crash in Erza's ship and get a call from her. Erza introduces herself and wise simps for her. Shiki asks her what she is after, Erza replies that she is after selling people like them, explaining that all of them belong to her now, she will sell them once they arrive on a piece of shit planet. Shiki being in his thief class right now decides to tell Erza that they will steal her ship instead, since they need a new one. Erza accepts the challenge and give him directions. Wise straps up, Rebecca is impressed with him but he ends up saying that he will win over Erza. Shiki encounters zombies? I guess zombies. They attack but Shiki easily dodges everything and makes short work of them while freaking out how awesome space is. Happy, Pino and Rebecca are trapped in slime tentacles. It's hot. Wise tries taking a peek at Rebecca since he is a creep but get captured too. Happy transforms into guns, Rebecca starts fucking shit up releasing Pino and defeating the zombies, but doesn't release Wise, she tries taking a peek too, Shiki gets to Erza's smash chambers, she turns back wearing a weird choke mask and starts throwing her wet tentacles at Shiki. Shiki getting smashed the fuck up remembers his grandpappy beating his ass too, and asks him how he is so strong? Michael saying that he is the demon king after all. Shiki attacks grandpappy again, only to get caught in his gravity power. Shiki tells him that's not fair and grandpappy decides teaching him too. Shiki, inspired by his grandpappy almost lays a punch on Erza, asks her what in the living fuck is she and Erza replies that she is to one to surpass the demon king. Erza asks what Shiki's objective is. Shiki tells her that his objective is finding mother and he will never give up. In a flashback grandpappy is dying, motivating Shiki even more to beat that ass. Other ships lurk around, they are the justice ships waiting to capture her. Erza tells Shiki that even the demon king Ziggy gave up on finding mother. Shiki says that he different for real, grows horns and hits Erza with all his juiced up power. King. I'm gonna keep fighting for grandpa's dream! And see it through to the end! That's a mech attack! Gravity! Comet! The team shows up and Erza starts melting, freaking them up. The real Erza shows up on screen, telling them that was just a parasite, they are on the storage ship and thanks them for cleaning it up. Erza offers them the ship, why the fuck did this bitch pull this hole as charade only to see Shiki's power. Erza tells Shiki that this ship belonged to Ziggy the Demon King, he used it on a quest to find mother, but he returned to Grand Bell knowing that he is about to die, and decided to raise Shiki, god knows where he found this freak. Erza says that she owes Ziggy her life. Shiki feels bad taking the ship, but Erza reveals her fleet of ships, this simp says that the Justice Force, or whatever their name is, cornered them. Erza tells our team to get the fuck out of there, Shiki thanks her, telling her that if she's Grandpappy's friend, she's his as well. Erza tells Shiki that Grandpappy told her just one thing about mother, that the one that finds her, will be reborn. Wise pulls the warp lever, be one of these levers. <laughs> mind boggling Shiki and himself. What just happened? Did we teleport or something? So dramatic. Oh, maybe they didn't have fast travel 50 years ago. In other words, we warped! The future is awesome! Space is awesome! Somewhere in the ship a big a capsule opens up, revealing a big titty goth girlfriend. Shiki tells Rebecca that their new ship will get them to mother. Wise intervenes saying that's his ship too, Shiki responding that he's not a friend. They start cleaning the ship and Happy suggests that Rebecca should do a bathtub twitch stream. Rebecca and Happy chill in the bath discovering that this bath activates the ether inside of her body. She shots a beam through the roof getting sucked out, but the ship repairs itself. Our team change outfits, Shiki looks cool as fuck, not gonna lie. Rebecca asks Shiki and Wise how they learned ether, saying that she might be able to use it too. Our team find the Demon King's room and Shiki takes a seat in his throne. Shiki's ether gear activates the ship and the big milker's goth sexy appears calling Shiki the new demon king. Shiki tells her to bark as a test, she does. Then act like a dog. Bow wow. Which cleans the ship and upgrades it with one move of her finger. She tells them that it merely reverted to its original form and its name is Eden Zero. Eden Zero has now reclaimed its true form, but which says that it has yet to return to its true power. Which says that she is part of the ship itself, however the ship's true potential can only be restored if all four Demon King's shining stars return together. Without all of them they can't break through the Dragonfall to find Mommy. 
which gives Rebecca a sensual massage, telling her that if she took baths every day, in Eden's zero pool, she could unlock ether gear. Which, continues with the massage. God damn that's sexy. Which asks about Pino and Rebecca tells her that the demon king billed Pino, making her a newer model than the shining stars. Rebecca asks where the other shining stars are, and which tells her that they left after demon king Ziggy gave up finding mommy, I think the massage ended with a happy ending. Shiki, wise, and happy try opening a door, but which tells them that it is the most guarded secret, and they cannot open it up without the heart of the ship, another shining star, they get creeped out by which listening to them everywhere, so Shiki tells her to stop that, because she's a living being too. Our team arrived at Blue Garden. Wise is excited about the new timeline he is in and dips, abandoning the rest. Rebecca, Shiki, and Happy decide to go to the guild first, maybe someone knows something about Sister, one of the shining stars. Which tells them that she can't leave the ship, they should contact her using Rebecca's device if something happens. Nice Curves appears telling Rebecca that it is good seeing her back home, only to be interrupted by Twitch's biggest whore. She tells Rebecca that without her trash, boring ass videos, she cannot go to sleep and that she should upload them. She wants to do reaction videos again. Shiki tells her to fuck off, and the blue bitch jumps on him blushing. She tells Shiki that she missed him and invites him to be featured on her OnlyFans account, but Shiki refuses. The blue bitch leaves, and tells Shiki to reconsider her generous offer. Clary's with the big ass, tells Rebecca that the guildmaster wants to have a word with her. Back to this boring ass streamer. As she walks down an alleyway with her bodyguards, futuristic Genos shows up babbling about Target Aquaird and Sister, you only need to wait a little longer. Nice. As our team eat, they often eat. Shiki says that he wants to meet the guildmaster too, thinking he could be his friend. Rebecca and Happy leave, Shiki asks Pino, why Happy gets to go with her, and Pino replies that Happy is not problematic. Shiki and Pino decide to explore, Shiki doesn't know what a vending machine is, or a fucking Roomba, or the water floating around in the air. Pino says that she wants to see an owl that goes boohoo. Shiki tells her that he saw one around, only to realize that they are lost, back to the emo dude and the blue piece of poop. This Sasuke from Wish, takes down every bodyguard. Stylish style. As he approaches our blue streamer, grabs her hand, and tries kidnapping he. Shiki shows up and grabs his arm. Freaking the fuck out when it deatakes, the assassin acts cool and edgy. Both him and Shiki activated their ether gear and prepared to fight. A fat toad tells his servant that he wants some Twitch streamers to add to the collection. Back to the hands throwing. Shiki runs forward, activating his gravity power and blasting the assassin into the air, appears behind him, and punches him to the ground. The second hand Naruto character throws gang signs, controlling his flying arm and hitting Shiki. Shiki gets blasted into upcoming traffic, but manages to dodge the truck. Sasuke throws his ninjutsu attack, slashing the road and blowing away the cars. Shiki saves everyone with his gravity power, but somehow struggles with this one. The assassin tells him how brain dead he is, for saving civilians in the midst of battle. He gets a call, says he didn't catch the target yet. Before leaving he tells Shiki that they can saddle the battle when the wind cries, on Planet Ghost. Blue girl sexually assaults Shiki as thanks and runs away. Shiki yells that ninjas are awesome. Ninjas are awesome! Back at the guild, Happy stumbles to Shiki in bad shape. They got attacked while in the guildmaster's room. Happy says that some weird guy attacked them, before he could do something Rebecca and the master were gone. The emergency news appears, informing everyone that a lot of kidnapping happened on Blue Garden, the kidnappers seem to be from Planet Ghost. Shiki, gets very mad and breaks the table, shocking Pino and Clarice. Shiki picks up Happy and runs back to the ship. Rebecca, waking up in full shibari, again, notices a lot of Twitch streamers have been kidnapped. Like, Gragnik the Destroyer, Ichi, Koru, Mila and Kappa. The Assassin, a green schlong, and a Frid show up, telling them that from now on, all of them belong to Sister. They tell Rebecca that they will be sold to that toad. The streamers start overreacting, which is their second nature. The green phallus, irritated, goes into the cell ready to beat the shit out this lolly, but Rebecca intervenes and is punished for doing that. Look at Dr. Disrespect reacting to this scene. Rebecca revokes in pleasure, the phallus is disgusted by her masochist tendencies, but he remains turned on. Gragnik tells Rebecca that she is cool, and Rebecca responds saying that her mukbang streams make her hungry every time. Rebecca blubbers about escaping and we can see their subscribers. God damn Rebecca is trash. Back on Eden Zero. Which says that Happy's injuries are non-life-threatening, but they will need Sister to fix him up. Where the hell is Wise? Which explains that Sister Ivory is the life of Eden, she is the shield of Edens, Valkyrie is the sword of Edens and Hermit, the mind of Edens. 
which also says that Pino will be their successor, and she will become the light of Edens. Wai shows up with this sexy samurai girl. Shiki asks who she is, and she responds that she is Nomura, she is not an enemy, Shiki asks Professor Thief what he is doing on the ship. Wise explains that he was walking around, saw him run, and thought that Rebecca was kidnapped too. Samurai Hotness, thinking out loud says that she will help them, slipping in, that she wants to fight the Demon King, Wise tells her that he wants to abandon them anyways. However under one condition, he will help her. We do not yet know the condition. Shiki asks how she is supposed to help. Samurai girl reveals her ether gear, even shocking which how powerful she is. Rebecca and the other streamers get to ghost. A horrible planet. The green meat stick tells Rebecca that if she does whatever the toad wants, even shake her little pretty ass, she will be fine. That mortified Rebecca. Back in another cell. All of them lost hope, Rebecca thinks of an escape plan. The toad shows up, talking about how hot the Gragnerk is. He explains that his hobby is turning beautiful girls like them, into furniture. I'm begging you! Don't move! I might accidentally kill you! So don't move! That's fucked up! Poor girl, she could have done wonders for the fan service. The girls began screaming and crying. The fat, ugly, gout having, leg skipping toad fucker, snaps his fingers, filling the room in soap. The soap melts all close. Liga, or the toad, says that he did this so the furniture comes out spotless. Poor baby Rebecca, the rest of the team just arrived at Ghost. But I want to test my skills on that planet. <laughs> we discover that the samurai girl is a battle junkie. As they walk through the ugly streets of Ghost, Pina tells Wise that he is a good person for repairing happy without benefit. Wise says that he only did external repairs, and his future self is amazing for building him in the first place. Pina assures him that he is not a piece of shit, as we all think. Shiki says that they will save them, regardless of what happens. Stepping into the church of Ghost, a voice asks them. Trespassers, what have you come looking for here? Is it power, money, or is it sex? Sister reveals herself to be the leader of the rough out, the kidnappers. That's sister? P.O.P. Yes, Pino, I am. I did not expect to see Sister Ivory in a place like this. Which, says that sister is not hot anymore, but her identity code matches. Asks Pino to exercise caution. Shiki asks where is Rebecca. <laughs> sister responds by calling in her soldiers as she leaves. Gravity boy smacks them around a little bit. One of the soldiers shoots a tracking missile at him. The samurai girl saves Shiki, revealing her soul ether gear and slashes the soldiers. Which, asks herself what is that sword doing with her. Samurai girl tells Shiki to follow sister. Sister, not paid in full, is traveling over to Liga, the toad man, to pay him a visit. Shiki, stuck to the ship better than Spider-Man would, decides to stay there until they arrive at Liga's place. As they arrive, goddamn she is off-putting. She gives orders to, hmm, this thing, and it starts flying. <laughs> Uh, I guess anything is possible. For real. Rebecca, realizing that the soap melts even glass, notices a window's placed very up. They mount each other, Eiffel Tower style, Rebecca manages to get up to the glass door and goes through it. No guards are up there. Rebecca goes through the vents, wrapped in a towel, God knows where she found that towel. Liga pulls her down using his tongue. Lucky. Liga decides that Rebecca will be his new toy, not furniture. As he shocks Rebecca, Shiki jumps up through the floor, and starts pummeling Liga to death. Pino says that they should stop Shiki soon, however, Rebecca says that they can't. We should probably stop him soon, right? I don't think we can. Pino deactivates Shiki's ether gear, he comes back to his senses and changes his profession to a gynecologist. The other streamers show up, all of them are wearing weird costumes. Only talk behind Shiki's ears is changing genre to a harem anime right now. One of the streamers offers Rebecca a costume too, but Shiki picks her up, throwing her into the air, as Sasuke attacks. Shiki tells Pino to take them to safety. One of the streamers asks if he will be okay. Rebecca blushing and wet, says that Shiki is the strongest guy she knows. Both Shiki and Sasuke activate their chakra preparing to fight again. 
Samurai girl, surrounded by bodies and bored is about to get backstabbed, but Wise saves her. Only to pull a gun on her himself. Butter breaks through the windows as demonstration for Wise's power. Moskoi! Moskoi! Million bullets online. Moskoi! Moskoi! Back on Eden Zero, Happy wakes up asking where is Rebecca, but before having the time to answer, an emergency alert comes on. Alerting a chrono monster coming over to steal Gul's time. Happy, scared about the chrono monster situation, asks which, what will happen if Rebecca, Shiki and the others don't get out of the planet in time. Which tells him that, they will be wiped out of existence, and prepare for atmospheric entry. Shiki and Alibaba Sasuke start fighting. Shiki, with a quick left hits Sasuke's ugly face. Sasuke throws his ninjutsu shit, not affecting Shiki much. Eventually Sasuke lays a good hit, but they get interrupted by Sister. Sister gives Sasuke new orders, to eliminate Toad Man on sight, but he disappeared. Shiki, mad that Sister is a piece of shit, wants to take on all of them. Sister got a ugly mug, but damn that body. Rebecca and the other stinky Twitch streamers run, heading to the exit. Only to realize that one of the curved spine streamer is missing. Pino says that would be inefficient. But Rebecca risks it anyway, leaving Pino perplexed as to why would she do that. Wise and Nomura, caught in their standoff, hear a sound and head down the elevator. They find the real sister Ivory, trapped in a bunch of cables that harness her powers. Green Dong shoots at Shiki. Taking cover, Shiki compresses his gravity into balls, and fires back. One hit landed, absolutely destroying Penis Man. Shiki throws some at fake sister, she uses Sasuke as a shield, healing both of them after. Rebecca, looking for the unwashed Chetu Finger streamer, finds Liga's furniture room. Liga shows up threatening the lolly with a water gun, and orders Rebecca to stay down. Um. Rebecca kinda, hot. One of Liga's servants comes announcing the chrono monster approaching. But I don't wanna go! What about my beloved collection? You're just going to have to start a new collection on a new planet! Rebecca uses this distraction to steal Liga's gun. Both her and Shiki remember playing video games together smashing their targets. The Wish Sister Ivory comes face to face with the sexy real one. Wise and Samurai Girl come too, telling Shiki that they need to get the fuck out of the planet pronto. The real Ivory tells us that the ugly bitch captured her when she came to check for the one that used her identification. Sister, not caring about anything she says, stumps her face in, good for her. Wise stops her, so they can fuck off already. But Sister first introduces herself to the new Demon King, and excuses herself for a moment, taking her clothes off. Don't worry, this shouldn't take long. Like I said before, I came to this tower ten years ago on a job. Not finishing it would ruin the reputation of the Demon King's four shining stars. Dispel Driver! Why are you stripping? Who are you upset? We're basically getting free not for it, baby! Sister heals everyone on the planet and they get out of there. Sasuke looks like an obsessed ex at Shiki. Shiki tells him to get out so he can whip his ass later. Sasuke despawns fake Ivory for lying about healing his sister. Everyone gets back together. Pino contacts Witch, telling her all of them are there. Rebecca tells this lolly to go, she will wait for her baby daddy Shiki. They only have 10 minutes left until this worm time eating freak gets there. As chaos fills the streets of Ghost. Rebecca is still searching for her lover Shiki. She cannot lose that powerful seed. Pino, tells Rebecca that rescuing that stinky streamer was the right decision. Pino receives information from which, that her master Shiki and the others will be joining them on Eden Zero. The planet starts collapsing whole, a hole swallows Rebecca harder than she would suck Shiki, speaking of the devil, here he comes and saves her again, making Rebecca blush. The others gather there and which, ask if the demon king could do something about the trees. Wise and samurai girl get way too excited for deforestation. Which tells them to keep going, but Shiki feels like falling directly to the ship. Everyone rides his meat sword for how cool he is. Which pushes full on the throttle, 
just before the Chrono monster ate the planet. Many were to spawn that day. However, the catastrophic event sent Gulst back in time, to a prosper age when no atrocious shit happened. The sexy narrator shows her feet again and tries doing what I do. Nice. But she got no chance. Everyone looks outside the windows, observing the Chrono monster eating away at that planet's time. Which enters the hall, saying that 12,000 years were devoured off that planet. Happy runs into Rebecca's arms. Rebecca starts crying, making Shiki cry too. Wise is creeped out by him. Sister says that the new Demon King feels familiar, which, refreshes her memory, and Sister, remembers why he seemed familiar, he was the child that Ziggy left his quest for. As they talk, which asks Nomura if that sword is Valkyrie's, the Sword of Eden's, Valkyrie told her that she could not defeat the Demon King Ziggy, so Nomura took on her dream, but Shiki doesn't want to fight her, as she is his friend. Wise, says that they don't know anything about Hermit's and Valkyrie's whereabouts, revealing that he wants to be part of the team. As he is about to shake hands with Shiki, the fridge guy, does it instead. <coughs> Turns out it is Sister's helper. He tries to push his don't push button, but Sister, yells at him not to do it. Don't make me repeat myself! My Rebecca and Nomura take a bath. Nomura says that Rebecca's training regimen is harsh, but happy, says that it's only 107 degrees. They talk about ether gear, and Nomura asks her what power would she like. Rebecca wants aimbot, and happy transforms to show her why. Nomura takes it as a challenge, but decide not to fight in the bath. Shiki asks where is Nomura, but she is getting, hmm. Gosh, which of these would you like to have today? I'm quite curious about the last one, but I could never say it out loud. <laughs> Is this training? Wise, finally reveals his condition for helping Nomura. His condition is wearing whatever he wants from the clothes factory. He thinks about about a bunny girl costume, Shiki, wants to wear one too. Clarice with the big ass, calls, crying again telling them that the guildmaster got away, apparently he was there too. Clarice tells Rebecca, that she sold stay off of Blue Garden, she is a little too famous, as the other streamers talk about her. Rebecca finally gets a lot of traffic on her YouTube channel. Shiki, offers to dance in a bunny girl costume for them. Our team starts approaching the Iron Hill, they see a statue of a couple of heroes. The heroes that lived through the Dark Ages, and fought to protect Sakura Cosmos. Pino points out to a girl sitting on top of a statue, it is Hermit, the Mind of Edens. The ship is in shambles after that stupid, outlandish looking dork hacked into it. Sister blames it all on Hermit, as she was the one that could have stopped him before doing all of that. Hermit threatens to push Fridge's guy don't push switch. Nomura, Rebecca, and Happy are taking a bath. They talk about Valkyrie, Nomura says that she just vanished around 3 years ago, and she can't wait to meet her, to show her new sword proficiency. Shiki and Wise eat burgers and Pino drinks a protein shake since she doesn't taste anything. Shiki starts to wail for her but Pino tells him not to feel bad since she feels that one day she will be human. Don't those two no machines can't become human? I feel bad for her, but it's impossible. However, if it's true that adventurers who manage to find mother end up being reborn, then perhaps it is possible. This sexy bitch, in a simulated virtual beach plot about infiltrating Drake and Joe's operation, reveals that her emo brother is in Ayrs' squad. The nerd from before, walks madly around the warship, only to be stopped by a hot babe named Maria. The dork is looking for Joe, finding him doing some BDSM activities with a submissive guy. Joe tells him not to interrupt if his matter doesn't bring as much money as his king play. Drake seems to have the ability of matter manipulation, changing to bottles glass into the heaviest material in the cosmos and breaking the glass. Joe tells him to pay up for his usefulness and wait for him in the lovemaking dungeon. The nerd tells Jor that he got his ass handed to him in virtual reality, and Joe gets mad for throwing his name around flexing his power again. Joe says now Seth and the nerd didn't even realize that his brains were painted on the wall. Now Seth. <gasps> what? Can't believe how fast he is. Wait, what? What are you? It's a quick draw. But it was so fast you didn't even notice you got shot in the head. Huh? Joe wonders if the Demon King would bring in any money. The Eden Zero. Will the Demon King's warship make me any money? Back on the Eden Zero, which says that the ship is almost at full power, they only need to find Valkyrie. Hermit promises to make it up to them for all the fussing before. Nomura says that her teacher Valkyrie had a friend in Blue Garden named Sister. 
Sister says that she's talking about her, duh, revealing that she used to work for the guild saying that it's weird that the guild master got targeted in the Twitch streamer's kidnapping incident, and says that she only got captured in Gulst because he sent her on a mission there. Hermit tells them that the legendary fortune teller might have something. Sister says that she knows past, future, present, and shit. This is different. It's more like she knows the past, present, future, and shit than fortune telling. Alert! Bad words detected! The narrator comes on just to tell us she's got a customer. Pardon me. My, my. It looks like I have a customer. It happens every once in a while. A client comes to find me. Wise tells Nomura that his condition was for her to wear a bunny girl outfit. Hermit gets on measuring and Wise looks through the choices. Look what else they have! Wow. Once you decide on a base, your options open up further. You can add or remove different parts, or even create new patterns. Are you serious? You said I can remove parts? I can remove parts too. A huge pair of hands catch Nomura and dress her. Goddamn. All of them change outfits looking like a Halloween party. Shiki suggests that witch should wear a see-through made outfit and get smashed by Rebecca. Wise proposes a witch outfit since that's her name. Sister dresses into a sexy nurse. Our team arrived on the fortune teller's planet, a planet where time stands motionless. On the front entrance, there's a sign saying to remove shoes before penetrating in. Guess we should. Do I take my tights off? Of course not! Those tights are great! Everyone, please be careful in there. I have found an anomaly. There is a lot of ether beyond this door. When our team opens the door we see a familiar scene. It's the sexy feet narrator. She knows everything, but she won't reveal anything until she gets something in return. The narrator snaps her fingers, and our team falls through the water, into a coliseum. Since the narrator knows everything, she gets horny about battles being the only outcome she doesn't already see. It was the only thing even I don't know! It makes it so hard turning on, flaming on! Now it's time to battle one of you must fight! Tell me please, who's the first challenger? Shiki gets excited taking off his scarf. He will face the greatest warrior from the planet Zorg. The greatest warrior from the planet Zorg! With a flesh made of steel! His only weakness is humidity. The narrator starts the fight and Shiki punches him in the gut, ending him in one punch. The narrator's juices flow at this surprising outcome. Everyone puts their hopes in Shiki, but unfortunately all of them have to squabble. Up next is Rebecca and Happy versus this skinny sack of bones. Wise thinks he looks like a drop of spit would drown him, but the skeleton starts shooting from his gloves. Rebecca shoots back, but his force field protects his fragile body. Rebecca gets mad and decides just kicking his face in, as she is about to murk him. The narrator announces her triumph. Up next is Wise vs Weird Bunny Dog Guy. Wise, decides to use Pino as a weapon. As the weirdo runs around, Pino activates her EMP, and Wise just stomps his head in, easy W. Up next, Nomura vs Valkyrie, the fuck is this? The narrator announces that she is up against Fakiri's replica. Nomura gets angry about this inferior copy of her teacher and starts attacking, but she gets overpowered by Valkyrie. Not even a surprise attack worked on her. Try again! Nomura thinks out loud that the replica has every move of her teacher and might be just as powerful. Nomura remembers getting saved by Valkyrie when she was a little child. Being an orphan unwanted child she takes a fondness for Valkyrie. Fake Valkyrie, talking shit about her footwork, gets a surprise because it was meant. Nomura wins and Valkyrie congratulates her, but she wants to hear none of it since it's a fake. The narrator tells her that it's unfortunate since she can't duplicate a shining star, making the original stronger. Nice. She thanks them for the steamy juicy meal telling them where Valkyrie is. Before leaving, she offers them one more token of appreciation and tells them about Mother. She's somewhere in this vast universe. Her omniscient power was given by her, but unfortunately, in exchange for that she lost her memories about her location. As they leave, the narrator says that they will head to Sun Jewel's planet to find Valkyrie and she returns to her storyteller job. On Eden Zero, head to planet Sun Jewel in search of Valkyrie. Yet what awaits the travelers on that world is... <laughs> I'll be returning to my storyteller role now. As our team travels to Sun Jewel, which wonders what Valkyrie is doing on a mining planet. For safety reasons, the travel will take three days since they need to take a detour around the debris belt. They can't even fast travel since they can do that only to previously visited places. Rebecca asks if that's the case, they should be able to travel into outer space without going through Dragon Fall, which responds by saying that Ziggy deleted all of the fast travel points, probably for a good reason. 
As they look outside the ship, they see a school of fish drifting through space and between those big ass fish, a dude can be seen floating through space with a steering wheel in hand. Which opens audio channels and they hear him calling for help. Somebody please help me. Arrived in the cockpit, the geezer introduced himself as Captain Connor, he is the captain of this ship. He explained that during a battle he held onto the helm to the bitter end. They feed Captain Connor, look at Rebecca sucking on this. Captain reveals that he is from the Ahoy Cosmos, and after being well fed he wishes to speak with the captain of the ship. Which says that Demon King Shiki is captain, Connor makes fun of them and offers his services as the new captain. Of women, children, and dainty androids? I didn't know the ship employment culture was so different in this cosmos. Very well. And I humbly accept all duties and responsibilities of captain of this ship. Nah, we're good. Sister hates this hitchhiker, but they respect Shiki's decision. Let's give him a ride until he figures out where he wants to go. <sighs> Rebecca, happy, and no more a talk about how weird is the guy, only for him to be there. This unbearable guy even makes Wise mad, tries pushing the don't push button. I'll give it a little push. <laughs> What's it say right there? And teaches poor Pino to cuss. F you. Fax you too. Close, but it's f you. F you. Please don't teach her how to say bad words. Even gaslights Shiki to call him captain. When you run out of toilet paper, there's only one option. You're the first guy who gets it, mister. Please, call me captain. Aye aye, captain. Everyone is about to murder him. Besides Pino with her foul mouth, and Shiki. I'm told you should say you in that situation. An intruder alert appears the old fart got into the pilot's house. As they are about run this guy's pockets, he tells them that he heard where they are headed and already took them to Sun Jewel. Hermit says it's impossible no matter how fast they move. Captain tells them that he's gone through the asteroid belt and calls himself Captain before leaving. The Sun Jewel appears to be a wealthy planet. Shiki asks a girl if she's filthy rich only to get T-Bar choked by Rebecca. Back on the ship, Wise and Hermit work on a new weapon, while Captain keeps influencing Pino in bad ways. Back on Sun Jewel, Rebecca dresses sexy for the views while discreetly gathering information about Valkyrie's whereabouts. A robbery takes place and everyone gets on the ground excluding Shiki. Your head is massive. It's a mask. Wait a second. You're bad guys, aren't you? Shiki activates his Spider-Man abilities and Nomura joins in making short work of the thieves. A beam shoots down from the sky and a voice says the crime on this planet won't be unpunished. Yikes, the crowd, thanks Shiki, but all of them are remorseful and don't understand how these freaks cheer while a bunch of dudes got vaporized. The murder justice got wannabe can be seen talking with Drake and Joe, he needs her to locate something using her divine punishment machine. A bird lands on someone's dad's shoulder and projects a picture of Nomura, this guy asks Valkyrie what is the next move. The justice guards gently float down into the casino to decide our team's punishment since violence is a crime. The same beam shoots down, and Shiki alongside Nomura gets sentenced to 100,000 medals. Rebecca, about to cry, asks them how can they be so cruel, and the zesty guards respond that they have been taken in custody until they collect 100,000 metal ores in the labor camps, taking off. Shiki and Nomura popped out of a red pimple into a cave with chokers around their neck indicating 100,000. A bunch of bugs pull up and Shiki falls unconscious with fear. As Nomura cuts through the number on her choker goes down, about to be overwhelmed, a squad of furries shows up and takes care of the bugs. One plus two equals... One million power! One plus two equals... One million power! I'm pretty sure it's three. Getting out, the silver fox tells them that they shouldn't bother with those shrimps as their heads value just one metal per bug. The warden beats the shit out of a man for slacking off and Shiki intervene, 
But the golden dildos threaten their savior so Shiki stops. The warden starts beating Nomura up since she is good looking and that's how this works. Shiki gets in his way, but can't do anything so the warden takes Nomura. Shiki stop! Don't worry about me, please! It's okay, I can use it to gather info! After all, he has no idea that I'm capable of using ether gear! You know I can hear you, right? Not again! Why can't I keep my thoughts to myself? The justice bitch interviews a so-called attractive man, orders him to undress and he does, that's awkward as fuck. Blondie Sweet talks her, but she rejects him for laying a finger on her since he overstepped his boundaries, she burns his face off. Miss High Value orders the octopus guy to fetch her some more phallus. Back on Eden Zero, Hermit, smug about it says that they will never find Eden Zero on their radar. As Rebecca thinks of a way to get in contact with the ship, the blue twitch bitch comes up to her, telling her that for a little favor, she knows a way to get into the camps. She needs to collaborate with her since she's very popular after the ghost incident and she also wants to ride on Shiki's demon stick. A weeb twitch streamer starts singing, Hassan from the looks of it. can save the universe. Blue bitch gives Rebecca a script and she, I'm. You leave it to me. I'll wibble wobble your heart. <laughs> Yay, that is so cute. Gets embarrassed on stage. Everyone laughs at her, but Hassan is not amused. Pino calls her a dirty good for nothing ho, but Rebecca tells her to chill since the blue bitch doesn't deserve attention. Hassan passes Rebecca a note telling her that Madam Justice bitch listens to everything but he knows a way into the camps. Nomura is tied up with a special rope that won't let her use either gear, as the warden is about to do some fun activities. The door smashes in and Shiki comes through. Nomura is my friend and that's that. I'm not some hero who fights for anyone, but I'll always fight for my friends, and I'll take down anyone who hurts them. The warden whips Shiki, but he is too slow for Shiki's sick powers. Shiki unties Nomura and tells him that she didn't realize that rope could disable her powers. Shiki wants to try too. Whoa, it's true! I can't use my ether gear either! It was an unexpected weakness. Oh, it's amazing. As Nomura says that this garbage probably knows nothing about Valkyrie, he gets out of the ceiling and says that Valkyrie was a good goddamn woman. While Hassan walks Rebecca, happy, and Pino through a secret underground way to the camps, he reveals that he is Miss Justice's dog and wanted to take them captive before seeing Rebecca's cosplay. Take that individual captive, but... <laughs> Your Wibble Wobble Ruby Bobble cosplay was simply out of this world! Just leave it to me, I'll Wibble Wobble your heart! See, you know how people say anime will save the universe? Oh, do they? So Wibble Wobble, I decided I wanted to help you guys instead of capturing you! I suppose Lobelia truly did turn out to be useful. Before Hassan leaves he suggests Rebecca should cosplay Angel too. Rebecca, Happy and Pino arrived at the camp, notice the robot bird that spies on all of us, and they decide to follow it. The bird leads them to this weirdo and he proceeds to show off his ether gear, stealing Rebecca's panties, and explaining that this is why he got imprisoned in the first place. The fat guy asks them if they are looking for Valkyrie handing them the truth about why Valkyrie left Nomura, and hadn't returned. Koopface, tells Shiki and Nomura that there is no chance he'll tell them anything about Valkyrie, activating the imprisonment beams, sending them to the nest of Black Rock, the stone that no one won against. You'll both probably get killed almost immediately. But even if you manage to defeat Black Rock, then Madame Kor and I will get a heap of metal. Either way, no matter what happens, me and Madame Kor and I win. Ah, the world is such an unfair place. Man, that really hurts, for Pete's sake. How the hell is that scrawny little brat strong enough to throw me into the ceiling? It takes me off! Maybe I should have killed him and his hot little friend with my own hands! What the fuck is this guy? Shiki and Nomura hear big steps approaching them, and Shiki hopes it's not a bug. Please don't tell me it's bugs again! Shiki gets excited to take that down. Both he and Nomura start hitting, 
To no avail since that shit is hard as fuck. A flock of bugs comes buzzing and Shiki faints again. Rebecca starts blasting taking all of them off. The helmet guy says that they need to fuck off before Blackrock finds them, but Nomura and Shiki have to try, so they can be released. Blackrock attacks breaking Nomura's sword. Pino analyzes the monster and finds a weak point on its back. The only problem is that Shiki's passed the fuck out. Nomura throws Rebecca hoping that she can blast Blackrock. Shiki joins in and helps her reach it. Rebecca blasts it on its back, Shiki suplexes it and Nomura stabs through it. As the monster is being collected, Nomura's and Shiki's chokers go down to zero, only to be reset after. The weird man flexes his ether here by starting the choker off their necks. Back in the Golden Tower, Miss Justice got a new pet, and tells her submissive guards that since they found a new way of making money, they should activate the Crimson Eye and incinerate everyone in the labor camps. Now that I have a lead on a new potential source of income, why don't we activate the Crimson Eye system and incinerate the entire labor camp? Nomura remembers Valkyrie training her and taking care of her at a young age. Five years later these receding airlines tell Nomura to give them her robot mother, and Nomura gets infuriated. At the trial, the father of this spoiled ass bitch tells Nomura to apologize and that he will not punish her. She gets into a fight with the soft ass receding hair spoiled bitch, so they get taken outside. The emperor says that he knows his bitch of a son is a spoiled brat in a grown ass man's body, so he will pardon her, but she needs to educate her daughter. Valkyrie, feeling that she can't be a good mother because she is a robot, leaves trying to find her real mother. Valkyrie goes to the fortune teller and tells her she will go back to her after she finds her real mother. The oracle reveals that Madam Justice is her mother. Five years before she got that bread, she gets approached by Valkyrie who explains to her that her daughter is alive and well, and the helmet man steals her choker off. Madam Justice found herself free and married a wealthy man assassinating him after. As Valkyrie is about to go give her a lesson, a group of monsters attack, Valkyrie goes through them and as she approached the silver fox, he explains that Madam Bitch was the one that aggravated the stone monsters so she could profit from more ore. Valkyrie, feeling responsible for freeing that woman, decides to take every monster down, showing why she is called the Sword of Edens. resulting in making Madam Justice even richer. Valkyrie, after fighting for a day straight and remembering Nomura, realizes that she loves her. Valkyrie died saving everyone. Nomura balls her eyes out, trying to get to her somehow. She asks if Wise or Sister could repair her, but Pino says. Unfortunately, when an android's core is stopped, it is the same as what humans would call death. Nomura, spent all day outside beside Valkyrie's body. Shiki approaches her telling her that her teacher sound awesome fighting to save everyone. Nomura tells Shiki that she might not be able to ever recover. Shiki tells her that he has been through that and that with so many friends she will be able to move forward. Shiki leaves giving a menacing look. Madam Bitch talks with her guards about how the garbage is not useful anymore and how Valkyrie didn't free her, she merely unlocked her true potential. As she says this Shiki breaks into the tower and says that he will bring her to see Nomura. She makes fun of Nomura since she is not interested in having a daughter. Shiki steps harder and collapses the floor, telling her that he will knock sense into her. What the heck? The floor is collapsing! You're coming with me! First I'll knock some sense into you! Ooh, how scary I'm shaking in my high heels. <laughs> Madam Bitch calls upon her zesty guards, getting Shiki surrounded. As they attack, Shiki throws a devastating attack sucking all of them in, and wiping them out in one move. Shiki lunches forward, but gets intercepted by Beast Boy, getting slapped into the ground. 
Cage face wraps his whip around Shiki's foot, giving Beast Boy a free shot. Shiki spun around throwing Beast Boy into Whip Man. Move out of the way! You can't, it's like I'm falling towards you! Shiki gets close to Madam Justice, but she catches his punch. Back in the mine, the Silver Fox says that Shiki is stronger than all of them combined, but decides to prepare their rebellion now. Rebecca runs outside to Nomura, and tells her that they should help Shiki. Rebecca asks if Valkyrie hurt her, if she told her how she feels making Nomura break out of that state. Back in the Golden Tower, an alert comes on warning that someone hacked into the Crimson Eye. Draken crossed her and took control of the Crimson Eye, he reveals that he doesn't need her anymore, since he already found Eden Zero. Madam Bitch, mad at Draken gives orders to destroy the labor camp and deploy the dragon, even though it's not fully completed yet. Shiki gets enraged that she would do that with her daughter there. Madam Crazy, gets in the dragon and goes to the labor camp first. Shiki tries punching it down, but he is not able to do that. Luckily, the revolution is prepared, Rebecca takes down a lot of zesty guards. Beast Boy jumps down there and starts taking down troops. As he is about to hit Rebecca, Wise, in a full metal costume shows up to protect her. Shiki is getting chased down and shot at by the bitch, she really wants his powerful seat. So this is the gravity easier I've heard so much about. Show me more. <laughs> Shiki gets captured between a wall and the dragon's punch. Rebecca asks Wise if this is the weapon he's been working on. Wise became Batman. I run identity verification. I'd rather you not, because a true hero never reveals their identity. What? You're supposed to be a hero? All right, we'll play along, Wise Man. It's Arsenal, damn it! Thank you for saving us, Arsenal. What could we ever do to repay you? Well, since you asked, you could put on that skimpy maid outfit from the dress factory. Kill <laughs> my ass, pervert! What is happening right now? Sister ordered Wise to bring everyone back safe, so Eyes punches the shit out of Beast Boy and shoots at him a big ass beam. Beast Boy gets behind him, but Wise pulls an Uno reverse card. Beast Boy lays a hit, but the ether coating does its job. As Beast Boy throws hits at him, the suite starts shutting down from the lack of ether and the lack of bitches. Wise puts everything into a Luffy attack. What's he doing? His heat energy is rising. Thank you for becoming the first stepping stone to Arsenal's legend. My heroic origin story begins with this! Metallica Explosion! Wise one, dot as Rebecca congratulates him for the victory, his jewels can be seen all across Sun Jewel's planet. Why are you such a pervert? The legend of Arsenal has begun! With the Beast Boy defeated, Wise in the nude, tries taking Rebecca's skirt, but she remembers she is not wearing panties, so Wise covers his pride with Pino's head. Shiki, not being able to escape shatters the earth beneath them. He shattered the earth below us? <laughs> Revealing the city underneath. Since Shiki can't change the dragon's gravity, he changes his, falling with a robot. Miss Bitch keeps on attacking Shiki, but Shiki turns his ether at the last second, denting the robot. Back at the camp, Hassan takes on Rebecca, Rebecca not having a chance with Hassan loses hope, and as she flies back from the impact, her ether gear activates on her legs. Nice. Sprints faster than Flash and lays her tasty shin in Hassan's face. Episode about a man brainwashed by a lady. Where Ruby uses her kit. It's the highest rated episode where she finally manages to break the hypnosis. Anime, it's going to save the universe. Which means it can save you all. 
you too, Nino. And the people of this planet. The original name of Ruby's attack only used into manga. Well done! The anime called it Bell Holly Kit, but I always prefer the original. Yeah! The manga is always better than the anime! Am I right? Except for this show. Wise comes in and Rebecca surprises him with her newfound speed. As the rebellion struggles holding back the guards, Nomura decides to join in thinking about her friends. The cage man comes, revealing that the slow paralyzing agent is really useful. Gage face starts acting around Valkyrie and breaks her head off. Nomura paralyzed and angry, activates her ultimate move, throwing 1000 flaming sword at Whip Man, but he manages to tow her down with his ether cancelling whip. Nomura, tells him that he deserves to die by Valkyrie's sword, as Whip Man looks up, he gets skewered by Valkyrie's sword. Shiki, dodging and evading Mrs. Bitch missiles, decides just to land on the armor. Shiki catches the missiles and converts their kinetic energy into his fist. Shiki finally took down the bitch, and she begs for mercy. My trump card! It was supposed to be the ultimate weapon! <laughs> Please, have mercy on me! I surrender! Hassan back at the Golden Tower, does the good thing and deactivates the guards. Shiki comes dragging Nomura's bitch of a mother with him. As everyone is about to stump the life out of her, Shiki stops them, thinking that Nomura should decide. Silver Fox gives their conditions. Understand. We'll leave that to Homura. But sir... My only request is that her fate involves severe punishment. Any show of compassion would be disrespectful. Only if you agree to follow this one condition of mine, will we allow it. Okay, gentlemen? Fine, man. Okay. The bitch starts lying telling Nomura how much she missed her, but Nomura with takes out the toy she gave her, and Stone Cold prepares to cut her down. As she is crying, Nomura cuts her ties and tells her that she is shit to her, her only mother was Valkyrie. Her punishment is to leave the planet and remain out of her life like she never existed. The bitch runs away, only to get her head smashed in, and get punished by the ex-hot guy that she burned his face. Bitch, I was worried I wouldn't see you again. That voice is that. Grab her. Hey now, she's way hotter than you made her out to be. For real. Stop, unhappy. Do you have any idea who you're dealing with? Yeah, I don't really care. From here on out, you're our little pet. And if you behave, you might get to speak. But only if we give you permission, right, Matt Carnot? You're not pulling any punches here, are you, Cedric? Don't do this! Don't do this! <laughs> Nomura thanks Valkyrie for everything and tells her that she loves her. Back on the ship, Moscow balls his eyes out. And sister asks why they didn't bring Valkyrie's body back. She's mad, maybe there was a chance to do something, make a copy with her stored memories, but it wouldn't be the same. Sister asks Shiki since he is the demon king, Shiki remembers what his grandpappy said. Believe it or not Shiki, machines experience death just like humans do. But because we have death, we can appreciate the importance of life. The value that we put on life may differ though. Since we machines and humans don't have similar lifespans, even so, if we both live our lives to the fullest, then our hearts will outlive us. And decides that her sacrifice would be in vain. Nomura proposes that she will become the me Valkyrie, and sister walks out furious. Moscow decides to be the new Valkyrie. Decided then, Moscow is to be the next Valkyrie! Maybe next time, Moscow. <laughs> Here's my idea for her new costume! Whoa! Then an increase of male adrenaline detected from Master Shiki and Professor Weiss. Back to Draken and his crew, they have been following a hologram this entire time, but they have an idea of where they're going. It's funny. Who knew they would fall for something so comically simple as a decoy? She used to love coming up to this deck and watching the stars for hours. Yes. And when she got injured in battle, I would always be waiting here to fix her. 
Yes. I had no idea it was this painful to lose a friend. Yes. Can you at least pretend to act like you give a shit? <sighs> I always envied that about Hermit. She's not afraid to cry, and be honest. I thought that maybe we could be like that too if we were alone. <laughs> what do you think?